Hi, I'm here for my weekly creepy and angst appointment. Mm. <laughs> it was very much like, you know, like going to the doctor. Just... <laughs> Anti-therapy. <laughs> Negatherapy. Therapy adjacent. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, welcome to the Dice Box and Tombstone Blues, where I seem to have uh, made a career out of traumatizing the party. Mm. Because you give me that much backstory, I'm gonna do shit with it! You know, you, you come up with the concepts, and what you don't have is the continuation of plot. I have the continuation of plot! It does work out very well, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Uh, so, yeah, previously, um, the, 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 the group rode into uh, a rather dust-storm-laden town um, to look into the Hillcrest Sanitarium, which they kind of got stopped before they even got to the point of the sanitarium, um, because they're trying to be careful being as close as they are to the actual wastes with a capital W. Um, the town in and of itself was bleak and distressingly lifeless, and through certain amounts of investigation and relentless horror, uh, they discovered that um, at least part of it is some sort of life leech effect, which not only uh, sort of pulls everything of emotional import out of something, along with its vitality, but leaves the corpse, if you like, of whatever it is they've drained, um, left to soak up uh, negative energies, as uh, Jillian found to her intense chagrin, and they don't know what's going to happen with that locket. <laughs> Currently, it's uh, lying on the floor over there with a snapped chain, and Jillian is probably a little too tired to actually deal with that because um, of the whole uh, come forth Lazarus thing she pulled on the mm priest that her presumed husband who presumably made some kind of bargain we don't really know what's happening there at this point um, and I'm sure there's going to be some attempts to find out at some point um, is is kind of stalking her um, I mean yeah, he did her some damage but didn't go in for the kill and instead just seems to be trying to muck with any attempt she is making to do good. Nobody knows what's going on with this, but right now we have Jillian slumped in a chair, the the, the, the the preacher man trying to get some sleep because he literally just came back from the dead and is also kind of exhausted. Uh, Reba's putting together food because somebody has to be the, 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 the common sense and, you know, everybody at least just needs food. And Alloy is doing science. Mostly finishing putting together her uh, lightning cannon, which was one of the casualties of the draining house. Uh, of course, nobody knows how long the exhaustion is going to last, because nobody knew Jillian could do that! Yeah. <laughs> Especially not Jillian. I mean, she knows now, obviously, but... Uh, mm -hmm. They don't really know how that's going to interfere with their plans, if at all, um, to to hit the sanitarium tomorrow. Their plan was basically to have the Reverend do his uh, mercy supply run a little bit early, and uh, watch to see what, if anything, came out to collect the supplies, or see if they can find another way in. So, yeah, that, that's where you are. Uh, Reba's put together a stew, and uh, the, the, the remaining people in the little church are kind of uh, gobbling it down as fast as they can, because they do kind of have to go home, because they can't really sleep in the church. 
and they're also a little bit worried about having sleeping in the same spot as Muffin. Um, and they don't really be, want to be out on the streets after dark. So they they scoff down their food. Thank you as uh, politely as they can manage. They're trying. They're bewildered, but they're trying. And then they kind of book it as fast as possible. Um, Alloy is just about finished with a lightning cannon by the time Reba gets around to feeding her people. Well, three more checks and five more parts and I should be all set. Jillian's still sitting in the kitchen. Yeah. Probably yeah. had a little bit of stew and took a bit of a nap. <laughs> yeah. Um, this sort of half the stew kind of gone, and then um, yeah, Reba's sort of looking at her the hat, so sort of tilted over her eyes right yep. up until a very quiet snore. <laughs> <laughs> Just watching the level, the, the edge of the bowl, make sure it doesn't tilt. <laughs> no, I figure she put it on the table. Come on. She, oh, okay. She wasn't. She wasn't brought up in a barn. Well. <laughs> was, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Near a barn. She was brought up barn adjacent. Yep. <laughs> there are manners at the very least. She uses cutlery. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yes, so Jillian napping in chair. Uh, potentially sort of half waking up when something that Alloy is doing in her last checks goes pssst. Dip, she <laughs> Jumps a bit in your seat when something is appropriately loudly bitsing. Oh! Welcome back to the land of the living. <laughs> fiddle, fiddle, click, v. <laughs> the phrasing, the phrasing. Oh my god. <laughs> Julian looks at her, but Alloy is clearly. Nope. No. Alloy is. Alloy is. <laughs> made of, of science right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, between between the bullet wound and the whole <laughs> live thing, um, <laughs> she, 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 she's a little dragged. Mm -hmm. uh, understatement, but you know. I do those. Reba's mostly just staying quiet and assessing everything going on because she kind of wants to ask Jillian about it but Jillian's obviously in no state and is not getting anywhere near Aloy <laughs> with <laughs> science in progress so yeah <clears throat> yeah um, Reverend is basically asleep in his room but if you check the attic um, while you were investigating the house he did set up some cots for you. Yeah, I think Reba probably would have left. Uh, hmm, I don't know if she would have opened the door to his room, given that he threw the shoe at it and closed yeah. it. But <laughs> Julian would, would check eventually. Yeah, he's he, he uh, he's, he's he's breathing. He's just yeah, you know, fully clothed on the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, basically. I'll leave a bowl of stew on the on whatever table surface nightstand is he's at, at not hand. gonna be awake until morning mm. that's just gonna sit there and get cold all right never mind then i mean you look at him and it's like yeah no that's yeah bring it in and go mm, no <laughs> <laughs> pull up david right back out julian will eventually get up and uh Make for the door, the door back to the sanctuary, and then pause, look back, go to grab the pocket, and pocket it, and then start going to windows, looking around outside, seeing how many exits there are in the building. Perception check. Um, given dark, it's starting to get dark outside. I'm. Well, I will not make you roll disadvantage by. Don't have to. Anyway, <laughs> you're you're exhausted. It's light out here. It's dark out there. 
mostly you see the light from the windows, some of which are stained glass, um, reflecting off blown dust. Mm -hmm. Is there, how many doors are there to go outside? Um, there really is only the, the, the front door. Okay, and show. Sit back down again in one of the pews, very tiredly. I just veg out again. Uh, someone's on watch. <laughs> okay, this is this is this is this is where I'm horrible to you. Constitution saving throw with disadvantage. Oh. Wow. Okay. That's a charisma save. Oh, yes, yes, it oh. is. Oh. <laughs> no, that's with normal. <laughs> oh, there we go. Still. still. Yeah, still. It's a, it's a con is not a, really a problem for you. Um, You do... Uh, now we roll the hand of fate. Yeah. And you do come awake at the slightest sounds. It, it's a new place. You don't know the kinds of noises it makes. And since you are on guard, every creak of the floorboards, every skittering of what turns out to be mice, one kind of damp squeak that is spot dispatching one of the mice. Um, a moment when you wake up because there's a weight in your lap and it's just spot going. <laughs> but you do get your rest and you're feeling much better in the morning. Uh, nothing seems actually make me a perception check with that con save. You do not need to roll at disadvantage. The shadows in the church do occasionally look a little bit suspicious, but by the time you're actually looking at them clearly, it appears to be just a shadow. You're kind of convinced that there had been something there, but it goes away whenever you're looking directly at it. Hmm. What is it like middle of the night? Oh, this this is kind of throughout. Or it's just ongoing. It, it, yeah, it's it's throughout the evening. Every so often, you know, there there's there's a there's a noise that can't be accounted for by spot on the hunt. And you look up, and you're fairly sure you see something moving in the shadows at the corner of your eye. But when you turn to look at it directly. It's just a shadow, but it looks like a different shadow than it looked from the corner of your eye. It gets kind of irritating after a while. <laughs> just takes your pistol, keeps it in hand on her lap, and settles back. On, on spot. spot. Oh, yeah. No, yeah, on spot. No, yeah, on spot. Uh, so when, when, when Reba wakes up in the morning and goes down, she'll find Jillian lying, you know, sort of slumped in, in a pew uh, asleep but starting to come awake as she hears Reba's feet on the on, on the floorboards and Spot in her lap with the gun kind of on her back uh, with, with bits of bits of smudges of gun oil on her fur. <laughs> she looks up and... Spot just sitting there with like head on paw just so yeah. this is a thing. <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> I mean, she was sleeping for a while, but, you know, the cats. And just sort of looks up at Reba with that, did I do good expression. <laughs> Reba doesn't even say anything. She just, just nods and slips out and slips into the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, Jillian comes properly awake in time to see Reba head kitchenward. And Spot giving Jillian a look that for all the world seems to say, do I get down so you can get up now? 
Jillian scratches its spot and then nudges spot gently. Yep, off, so can off stand. spot goes. She yeah, Jillian stretches is very yeah, stiffly. Yeah, because that that's gonna that's gonna be brutal on your back. Mm-hmm. Pews are not pews are not comfortable at the best of times when you're slumped in one. You, <laughs> no, 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 no. So, is she still back up to full health? Yes, it's, it's, long it's, rest? Uh, you got you you as you usual. Your, yep, that's part oh, of what know. that's part of what the con save was for, oh. uh, just to see oh, if okay. you could get your your full rest out of the appalling sleep you got <laughs> but to be fair it wasn't that appalling apparently this is something that you picked up on your various bits of range riding which to be fair given your current situation is probably not something Jillian wants to dwell on too much mm-hmm. Jillian goes to the front door open up and look outside still dusty um, the sun seems to be starting to come up, which uh, paints the eastern sky a kind of a rusty blood color. But that seems to be sunrise around here. Um, close the door back up, lock up, and head down to the kitchen after Reba. And... You, you do have Muffin, who's still by the door, because nobody's told Muffin to move. Uh, extending neck out after Jillian and just going, boop. Boop, boop. <laughs> Jillian just looks awkwardly <laughs> to Muffin and then keeps going to the kitchen. <laughs> and I'm, I'm assuming Reba's trying to put together something that resembles breakfast. There's, there's, and there's a, there's not that, that much, as, as the Reverend said, his, his supplies are a little, uh, denuded, but uh, mm-hmm. there, there, there's corn flour and a scanty amount of preserves and there's a side of bacon in there that hasn't been too much used as yet. <coughs> Yeah, basically just trying to put something together for all of us and also a little bit more for the Reverend. Because <clears throat> he Jillian, it. Jillian takes the set aside plate and goes to the Reverend's door. Yeah, and he's knocks very quietly. Yeah, there there isn't a response, but if she opens up the door, it really is because he's still asleep. You're an adventurer. You have you have more resilience. He's just She'll close the door and set the plate back down on the counter for now. Still out? Mm hmm. All right. What's Alloy doing while all this is going on? Sputtering into wakefulness, double checking all of my gear, then going and double checking Muffin. Boop. Boop. <sighs> hey, Muffin. Thank you for being you. Leans to put the head on the shoulder. Boop. There are pats, scritches, mm-hmm. and polishing to be had. Mm-hmm. Muffin is mm-hmm. going to look sparkly AF when this is done. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, so, so somebody might want to bring alloy food because you mostly start hearing a little... I'm assuming that given alloy is... Well, alloy, she probably has one of those little... Um, powered by we don't know what, but a uh, self-powered buffer. Just... Yep. <laughs> so you guys... It's it's not it's not the, the screwdriver noise, but it's just... <laughs> And Jillian's going to be stretching the kinks out of her back for at least an hour on and off. Yeah, I'm, <clears throat> I'm looking at Jillian's condition going, never mind. <laughs> and I'll grab some of what I put together and bring it out to uh, to Aloy. Who is Just, buffing, yeah. buffing Muffin with her, her, yeah. her something powered buffer. She just shakes her head and just, Aloy, here, Aloy, here. Right. Oh, hell, power of breakfast. 
Yeah, it's basically corn pone with, with jam and bacon. <laughs> the amount of, of, of ability to discern and or give a shit about what it is is non-existent. <laughs> it's just... And make sure all of my stuff is sparkly because de it degrading is a no. <laughs> mm. That's fair. And Alloy is still too busy checking on things to uh, ask questions like, how's Jillian? How's the Reverend? There is uh, still dried blood on the floor, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so much of it. And a smaller splat of it that Reba, looking at it, knows is mouse. <laughs> she's, having had Spot as long as she has, she's probably seen that on more than one occasion. Yep. She's just... Mm, somebody's getting a little extra bacon. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, breakfast is had. Um, if you're checking on things, make me an investigation check. Uh, alloy. Beep, bop, boop. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yet again, now we roll the hand of fate. Uh, yeah. While you're you, while you're distracted, um, uh, trying to you know, trying to poke at at, at at various bits and pieces, you don't think about where you're. Excuse me. You don't think about where you're putting your breakfast. And you wind up getting a uh, strawberry jam from your cor corn pone um, in uh, various of the joints of muffins flaps. Ack! After the buffing. <laughs> and now I'm going to attempt to rectify that. That's easy enough to rectify. It's just you know, careful washing and a little bit more buffing. And you, you, you guys just hear ah, <laughs> and then oh. if you peer in, Reva will, Reva will look out, see Alloy freaking and frantically scrubbing at Muffin, just being like, "That's supposed to go in you, not him, <laughs> um, whatever." <laughs> Yeah, to be Jillian. fair, to be fair, given that role, she was trying to do some scrubbing, and she mistook the corn pone for a sponge. Scrub, 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 scrub. Jillian <laughs> glances up at the sound, and then when there isn't a following sound, she decides not to investigate. <laughs> well, yeah. not after right? look on Reba's face. Exactly. Yeah, Reba just turned and saw Jillian was just like, just no, just no, <laughs> just keep stretching. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there, there's Spot at, at Reba's feet just going, there was mice. There aren't mice anymore. <laughs> they weren't very tasty, though. That's okay. We'll fix that, and I'll give them, give them some of the bacon. Her? Remember? Spot her, some of the bacon. Uh, yeah, sorry. No, 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 no. The, the, the usual. Big, big pets. <laughs> <laughs> So okay, breakfast is had. The the Reverend kind of does uh, stagger out eventually. Uh, Jillian seems to have recovered a bit better from this, but again, she is an adventurer. He is, he has minimal class levels, but <laughs> well, and and you know, Jillian wasn't the one that was dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Jillian very carefully helps him to a seat I'm, in the kitchen. I'm fine. I'm just a little bit stiff. Which I think you can probably uh, sympathize with. Yes, yes, I can, Reverend. Um, She's still helping him down. Yeah. That she gives him a lot of space. Yeah. Sits and well, uh, thanks for tending to things. With a look that suggests that he's pretty sure that Jillian probably doesn't want to talk about what happened last mm. night, so he's not bringing it up. <laughs> Probably weird for him, too. Mm. The uh, least we can do. I didn't mean to bring my own troubles down upon you and yours. Well, uh, I suppose that's when we start getting into mysterious ways. Uh, 
That's true. We don't know what all's connected with what when it comes to this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're gonna sort it out. I'm I'm aware. Um, after all that, I ain't sure exactly how much help I can be beyond delivering the supplies. As I'm not sure you're in much shape to be riding out. Reverend. We do what's necessary. That we do, but... And at least I ain't walking. You, you still have a responsibility to your flock here. Well, up until the point when uh, you need to not be seen, you'll just have to keep an eye for me, won't you? Hmm. All right. I won't have a flock to tend if this doesn't get resolved. <coughs> and I don't know yet if anyone was taken last night. Hmm. All right. Well, take your time. Get yourself back upright and. Well, get the horses ready. I uh, reckon some food and, uh, uh, I know what you didn't find. Points to a, a cabinet and there's some actual coffee. Good stuff, too, from the looks of it. Or more from the smell of it, really. It's generally kept for celebratory purposes or emergencies. This is... Bit of both. Yeah, glances at Jillian. Yeah, in a way, a bit of both. <laughs> Welcome Jillian back, Reverend. Goes about, start making some coffee, pauses and looks back. Never did get your name, did I? Things moved awfully quick yesterday. I'm happy to stick with Reverend, thank you very much. Hmm. Jillian Kane. Pleasure. Don't worry, if it's needful for some purpose, I'm sure you'll be able to get my name from somewhere if I can't tell you myself at some stage. I just stick with Reverend. Very well. on a number of levels. You have a look, Ethan. Does Reba want to make an insight check? Yeah. <laughs> uh... Uh, yeah, never mind. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, from from that, because he's not really trying to hide anything. I mean, that's what she gets. He's not really trying to hide anything. Is This seems more of a... Given what happened yesterday before... You know, after Jillian got shot, but before he got knifed. And her seeming better after he murmured his own little prayer. There is an indication that, you know, Jillian may have the word. He may have something else. And it's entirely possible that he's taken it to a more humility place. Thus, he's sticking with what's important and his name isn't as far as he's concerned at this point. Which is kind of what I figured, uh, so I just, she's not going to say anything. It was just considering his words and, and, and just general being, whether or not that jibe true or not to her. And yeah, so she won't say anything. Yeah. Again, she, you know, he, he's not trying to hide anything. So that, that's simple enough. It just, he considers it an, he considers his name an afterthought and all he was saying was, you know, if you if you need or want to carve my name on a tombstone, you can find it written down somewhere, probably. But no, he's not running from anything. He's not trying to hide anything. He's just the reverend. Yep. Uh, well, and even if he was, like, she wouldn't have said anything, given <laughs> given the hospitality and the kindness he's shown. Yeah, I, I'm aware of that. Again, you don't necessarily need to explain what 
she'd have done if that wasn't the case. It's, but you did because you over explained everything. I know. Mm. Pat, pat, pat. Jillian heads outside with coffee in hand to go check on the horses. The horses are not happy horses. Oh. They've been out there. And they look kind of nervous and antsy and. And how close are you looking? Pretty close. She's just going to do, you know, do the horse thing. Uh, yeah, you probably won't need an investigation check. Um, and it's been a few years. You've had to replace your horse at least once. Um, the horse you have now did not have the brand of the horses that your that you and your husband drove from one place to another. This one does. Doesn't look very happy about it. And it looks quite recent. Mm. Ah, crap, I hate this chair. Jillian? Jillian percepts. Maybe not. <laughs> Your then... perception will. You with the perception. Yeah, it was like <laughs> last week and this week both, man. <laughs> Apparently, you have a lot in your mind. Hmm. Well, there is wisdom, but clearly not enough of it to be entirely aware of everything. Well, it's more that, you know, yeah, she has a lot in her mind. Don't you think that whatever this is is kind of counting on that? Mm -hmm. she, she get, get some water and. Horse food and just you know, tends to them, tries to get hers and Reba's horses just to be in as best sh shape as possible. Yeah, uh, Jillian, Jillian's horse is kind of uh, skitty, but he knows her, so it really is just kind of nuzzle, get me out of here, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Reba's horse tends a little more towards the aloof. I mean, she used she used to ride a mule, but uh, in the last month or so, since your last uh, thing, you needed something a bit with a bit more speed. Given how far you were traveling, and Muffin can just keep up, whatever, <laughs> because Muffin is Muffin. <laughs> boop 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 boop. But yeah, uh, Reba's horse is a little bit more aloof and basically waiting on Reba, but is is happy enough to be fed and watered. It's just not as friendly to Jillian as Jillian's own horse is. Besides, <laughs> Jillian's own horse has just recently been branded and is not particularly happy about that. Mm, and she'll eventually head back inside. Yeah, Jillian doesn't look overly happy right now. <laughs> Something wrong with the horses? No, they're fine. Just... <laughs> Give Inside me a check. deception check. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're fine. Yeah, the the reverend is going. Uh, I understand that there's generally speaking a need to be a bit more reticent about some personal matters, and ordinarily I might not press, but. Given the circumstances, I feel that perhaps the people that ride with you might deserve a bit more in the way of honesty. Natural, mm. natural 12. <laughs> and does have a couple of modifiers mm. in places. And he's, 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 he's slowly, but he is packing up the bits that he set aside as uh, supplies. Jillian just gives 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 mm. uh, Reva just gives Jillian that look and is just waiting. <clears throat> Isaac branded my horse in the night. Mark or fame is used on the herds. 
but I looked at both of the horses. They're skittish, but they're not. They're they're all right. Me thinks that was less about doing things to the horses and more about doing things to you. I'm aware of that, Aloy. Yeah, well, here's the thing. How paranoid are you now? Doesn't matter. I don't know that sanitarium. Yeah, it matters. Just get your gear sorted, Aloy. Should get it moving. It matters. It matters. It always and, matters. You go well, on about wait, how all the well, well, Alloy's, uh, well, Alloy's mouth keeps moving. No sound is coming out of it. Don't look at me. <laughs> Jillian looks to the Reverend. He's still packing things up. <laughs> he seems to I'm have recently still... restarted. And you can't hear the words coming out of your mouth anymore. <laughs> At the just there's an expression of very, very displeased, then fuming, and then just furious ranting appears to be happening, <laughs> but you guys clearly can't hear a damn thing. Sometimes reflection is best held in silence, is all he says as he's packing things <clears throat> up. Reba just kinda smirks and He just leaves it at that. <laughs> and just sort of nods at the reverend, just like, and gets her stuff. Alloy is not happy. Like, there, there's the girl is cross as all fuck right now. <laughs> well, to be fair, that only lasts for about a minute, but by the time that one minute is up, she's kind of run out of air on the rant. So you get the last few words and then. <laughs> <laughs> And his Jillian? last words are, son of a fuck! <laughs> is that any kind of language grab her to pack use and in head the out. house of the Lord? I'm <laughs> <laughs> just gonna grab stuff and stump outside. <laughs> are you bringing muffin? Looking at... I'm gonna stop as I get to the door. Look out. Look at Muffin. Boop. He, that, Muffin actually gets to the feet. Chunk, chunk. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Chunk, chunk, chunk. Just very, just looking outside, very concerned. But without that, you don't have trying a force. To, and like trying to run calculations as to how long can I risk it. And you're like, oh, can't really help it. Come on, Muffin. Boop, boop. Chunk, 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 chunk. Boop. Muffin does not like it out there, but Muffin is going to... He's going to be with his alloy. Yes, he is. Mm -hmm. Boop, boop. Just a lot of sort of nervous petting of Muffin. And it sort of leans down into mounting position. Just climbing up onto him is usually a bit tricky. When he's not, you know, box. Yeah. I'm just going to situate myself and just wait for everybody else, still kind of fuming a little. Uh, Reverend comes out. Um, his horse does not look quite as healthy as your horse's, because obviously he's been living here for a while, but as well cared for as a horse can be long term in these circumstances. It's not too much a broken down old nag, just kind of thin and very skitty. Right, um, keep close, I reckon. It does have a fairly old rifle strapped across his back, because he's not stupid. <laughs> and onward you ride. There's not a lot of anything in the hour and a half or so, you end up riding at a walk an occasional trot, really, which you only go at that pace because the visibility is so bad. 
and there doesn't seem to be much to avoid, but you don't know what might crop up. Uh, perception check from all of y'all. Thank you very much. 21. There we go. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Aloe's still fuming, apparently. And you're muted. I can only do observant things in very specific contexts, like Sherlock scanning. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, I mean, you hear noises. They do not sound like human noises. They do not sound like any animal noises that you know. You don't see anything. But there's occasionally just off in the distance, off, you know, what would be the corner of your eye if you could see anything, but it's too far in the dust, whatever it is. This is just kind of noises and other weirder sounds that defy description and couldn't possibly be made by anything human. You're not entirely sure whether that's I mean, nothing seems to be coming to attack you, but that's part of the problem. You're consistently waiting for an attack that's not coming. And it, it doesn't take very long to realize that that's probably the point, but you still can't afford to drop your guard. Book out, and I'm going to do some more calculations on some stuff. Well, yeah, because you're not, you're not, you're not hearing any of this. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm just looking at Jillian, doing some math, looking at Jillian again, scribbling some more. <laughs> Jillian's looking around constantly, their hand on the grip of her gun. Gonna pull out the sonic screwdriver. Click V click. What are you doing with it? Honestly, just make a noise to see what the reactions are. What are your reactions to suddenly as you're kind of looking out to the edges? Jillian stares at Aloy. More scribbling. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, the reverend tenses and does actually uh, twitch in the general direction of his rifle. Because <laughs> he's not even used to that noise. He hasn't heard it very much, so it really is just... Mm. Reba went and then realized Eloy was too far away to smack upside the head. <clears throat> Uh, when the when the sonic screwdriver noise uh, finishes up, a couple of minutes after that, the there is further noise. It doesn't really resolve itself into m much of anything identifiable for Jillian, but for Reba, she's perceptive enough to know that it's not the sound that she is hearing is not the result of a physical thing actually happening. But it sounds like somebody taking a whipping. The kind of thing that she might have heard her mother tell about. The kind of thing she might have avoided herself a time or two. You're muted. She goes a little pale uh, at, at, at that. That doesn't say anything. Jillian books to Reva. Keep moving. Alloy is actually lucky in her 
lack of perception at this point. I'm gonna look at Reba, watch her go pale, add more notes. <laughs> A little further on, maybe fifteen minutes later, um, similar sort of thing. Given the given that was a very good role. You are also aware that this is something illusory, but whether it's a, a a copy of something of a sound that was made elsewhere and else when you don't know um, is you will probably remember for the rest of your life that horrible sound of uh, screaming and a Bowie knife cutting through throat that that's a cutting through that particular type of meat is a very uh, to, to quote Elliot it's a very distinctive sound <laughs> visceral I think is the word distinct all all of them are visceral it's a very distinctive type of visceral the thing is is that when you heard it last night the scream was largely strangers it wasn't even the reverend who was screaming that time this time, the screaming that you hear prior to the which turns the scream into something bubbly and fading is your mother. Oh dear, how bad did I break her this time? <laughs> well, it helps that she does, you know, under, understand this is illusory. So there's yeah, but she doesn't know whether it's something someone just made up. Or yeah, if it's something... so. But at the same time, there's fuck all she can do about it right now. So actually, I was more talking about Jillian at that point. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought that was... A little of both. Alloy's mother. No, 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 because Alloy doesn't... Alloy doesn't hear any of this. Yeah, I funny. haven't registered. I'm here taking notes and watching you individually kind of freak <laughs> yeah, out no, that and was... clearly documenting this. Yeah, that, that was that, that was Jillian's. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, Jillian's tenses very tightly until her hand is trembling on her gripping her gun Just looks around again even with that perception check there's nothing to see mm -hmm. keeps moving on Reba just looks over at Jillian just nods just like uh huh she nods <laughs> very slowly <laughs> Yeah, just, uh-huh, yeah, right, I know, isn't it? That's a thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tense ride for you two in particular. Um, similar kinds of noises that either are specters of things that might have been, might be all touching on your former lives. But eventually, up ahead of you, you start to register a faint, boxy kind of shape. And the Reverend pulls you to a halt. That's the asylum. Uh, unfortunately, there ain't that many places that really qualify as cover as you get closer. There's uh, another couple of minutes right up ahead. There's a bit of a rock formation, but I, the the dust is worse than it's been. I, I ain't sure how much you're actually going to be able to see. But... Uh, I'll go and leave these things out. It's a few hundred yards from that particular little bit of rock. It's the only one that would likely hide all, th all three of your, your mounts, you know. 
That'll do. I'll back on the back directly. Yeah. And trots on. Passes by the rock formation that you guys can hide behind, but doesn't really stop. Let's you guys get yourselves situated. How are you going to get yourselves situated? Crouch down behind, whatever. Cover is there. Yeah, Try to get the horses in cover out of the wind and out of sight. Yeah, out of the wind is a little bit difficult because it's, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's basically, a, it almost could be a remnant of wall, this thing. It's high enough to hide the horses, but it's doesn't really angle anywhere. So it's not really all that much protection from the wind, which seems to change direction according to what will be most annoying for you. <laughs> I'm going to try and situate myself sort of as prone as I can and use any sort of sight attached to the, the cannon as to sort of direct where I'm looking. As far as I know, you have never actually done anything to, um... Yeah, no magnification, it's just any site that's there. I'm just sort of using it as a pointer for myself. Um, hang on. And pulling on uh, the goggles of night just for the sake of, of, of hoping that clears some kind of vision. Uh, Reba? You have shiny new things. One of your shiny new fifth levels? <laughs> You're muted. I'm not sure which one would apply. Uh, you're... There's somebody you want to keep track of who you can't see. Because of where they are. Ah! Okay. So, let's see. So, yeah, what I will do... Uh, so then we'll... Eloy is is looking. Jillian's doing whatever Jillian's doing. Um, Reba will uh, because of how the spell works, and because uh, you really didn't do a terrible lot of reading on what you could do to actually prep this in advance. Do you want to retcon a little bit to say that before he rode off, you told him what you were going to do, because it says that the target can fail the saving throw voluntarily if they know mm -hmm. you're casting it. Yes. Yeah. I didn't remember that part of it. So yeah, um, she'll do uh, I'm not sure what the mechanism would be in her case for it. Um, but she will go ahead and cast uh, Scrying. I'm sure she Does that got... need to be cast before he goes off or after? Uh, either or, really. It, okay. It, she she can watch him basic... Because the thing is, the casting time is 10 minutes. So... Right. Uh, she'd have to have him wait briefly while she did the casting, probably. Because if he gets there and back again, mm -hmm. there's really not that much point. Right. So yeah, so it would have been um, she would have stopped him uh, when he mentioned the uh, the spot and been like, uh, <clears throat> "I can keep an eye on you from a distance, uh, a bit more directly, but indirectly." Uh, I believe that you know you you're probably familiar with the term scrying. So, uh, if you would allow me, 
uh, I would like to go ahead and do that just in case. I have a feeling that methods aside, uh, young Miss Kane would probably feel a little bit better if I had someone keeping an eye on me after yesterday. So then, yeah, she'll... Uh... I mean, she's probably got something... She, she'd probably usually use a bowl of water, but in dust like this, she can just borrow a mirror off someone. Yeah. Anything um, reflective will probably do for her purposes. Uh, Aloy, you have uh, either a mirror or a... Flip, click, click, click. It's a compact sort of thing that I just pull, pull out, flip yeah, open, and just sort usually, of hold usually it There's usually just out. one click. It's just a flip, click. Yeah. It, because it's alloy, it's over-engineered, so it clicks and then unfolds in a weird direction. Okay. It just, yeah, okay. That'll... <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. And since they're since they're deliberately since he's deliberately failing the save, mm -hmm. if you, you 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 as I'm I'm not dealing with some of the gold uh, costs of this. Um, you've you've got you've got components. It it takes some really rare herbs, but Actually, now we roll the hand of fate. Thankfully, while a couple of the containers that had your really rare shit had broken, there's just about enough left that hasn't pooled in the bottom of your bag for one cast, maybe two. But you're desperately going to have to restock, because unfortunately it was the rare ones that were the first to go. Yeah, because of course it was. The, yeah. yeah, of course. So yeah, the ten minutes of uh, uh, chanting, uh, burning various things, and passing the compact through the smoke, and that kind of situation. And yeah, you see him standing with you guys after ten minutes of that. Okay. Perfect. And he gives a nod, and off it goes. And so when, while everybody's setting up, she'll, rather than looking out, um, well, she'll kind of keep an eye on the, on the compact, but do like, kind of like, you know, like every once in a while, look out, but pretty much just keep eye on the compact. Cause I doubt with the dust and everything, she's going to be able to see much. Well, not if she's looking like up. But she does have uh, Julian and Alloy covering her, so mm -hmm. it depends on how much she trusts them. <laughs> <laughs> not that much, apparently. Yeah, it's not like she has a choice. And she's basically, and after the sounds and everything, she's also a little extra paranoid. Yeah, well, but I'm just saying that if if she has to look up, there. You know, they may not be permanent trust issues, they may just be because of where they are, but if she truly trusted them and the situation in conjunction, she wouldn't have mm. to look up. And you're muted again. You drop Dusky on the mute button yep. again. So, yeah, no, given, given how long we've all been together by this point, yeah, she wouldn't look up now that I think on it. She probably would so, the yeah. first couple of times and then just shake it off. Yeah. Going, yeah, that sounds know, more the, the point. Yeah, this it's like glance, glance. No, I don't have to do this. I don't have to do this. Focus. Mm -hmm. What you see through the compact is um, after largely just uh, the poor man riding through the blowing dust with his own degree of tension that he isn't mentioned to you guys because everybody got something. The boxy building thing resolves into, well, an actual boxy building. It's, uh, you're getting to see a little more detail as you get that close, though. What you see is, uh, seems to be a single story structure. Don't know how deep it is. Um, 
longer towards the back because at the front, uh, where he's approaching, about half of the acreage, if you like, it's not a huge building, but that's the best word I've got, is taken up by a uh, uh, basically, it seems to have been a garden at one point, um, but it's linked by, it's it's chained off by some very solid looking chain link with barbed wire across the top. And make me a perception check. Yeah, no. uh, you don't you don't see enough of the garden to get a real sense of if there's anything in there. Um, the reverend carefully clambers down off his horse, unloads his precious supplies, hesitates a moment, knocks on the door waits for a moment, ponders briefly, and then takes a bit of a walk around the building to give you a look, basically. And this spell lasts for a while, so... Well, and, and we... Well, as this is going on, Reba's keeping a running a, commentary. A, yeah, a low, a, a low volume running commentary. Can we see him normally? <clears throat> no, I and mean, you may basically you're seeing there's a black shape up there somewhere. Okay. What Reba is seeing, because you guys are seeing, there's a glimmer to the mirror, but you can't see this. Um, as you pass by, you're seeing and. There's a couple of spots with windows. They're heavily barred, but there aren't many windows. And the ones that are, like I say, bars on them. There's got to be more rooms than this, but whatever they are, they haven't got windows. There's not a lot of ways in beyond the front door from the looks of it. I mean, we can attempt scaling the fence. Give me another perception check. Those are passing by the garden a second time. One of the things, you're not sure why, because you're not getting close enough, you can't because of the barbed wire and everything, and the, you know, the chain link in the way. There's a... There's some rocks in the middle of that garden. It's about all that is growing apart from surprisingly bright plant life that's probably not very healthsome if it's flourishing in a place like this. But there's something about the rocks that bugs you. It finishes the walk around the building. Knocks at the door again. Still nothing. Looks down, the supplies have gone. Thinks about it for a minute. Decides that discretion is the better part of valor, clambers onto his horse, and leaves in a big tearing hurry. And pulls up uh, alongside you all. Uh, I ain't sure how much the help that was, but tried to give you a look. Appreciate it. That, uh, that was wonderful. Uh, I'm just glad you're safe. Well, I thought about press in the matter, but uh, didn't didn't seem appropriate. You've done more than enough, Reverend. So what now? Three of us will have to take a closer look ourselves. Figure out the best way in. Right. Oh. Good thing I got my rifle. <laughs> I gotta get back. Uh. <laughs> I didn't think you'd take too kindly me going along. And I ain't gonna press the issue. But I still gotta get back. Yeah. 
this isn't exactly the middle of the town drag, is it? And I'm looking at the other two. <sighs> he reaches over and plinks Alloy's nose. Pink. <laughs> <sighs> Do not make me silence you again, young lady. Sort of an awkward squawking noise. <laughs> Just hurry back as safely as you can. I'll do my best. Um, I, I, I ain't sure you have got the, the time to keep watching. And even if you did, I don't reckon if it uh, if it came to it, you, you'd be able to get there in time anyhow. But I'll do my best. God's grace be with you. And you. Hope to see you again. And gives the horse a bit of a yeah and uh, trots off back the way you guys came. Oh, the things I would give for an actual lab and a chance to build proper shielding for any of this. Boop. Thank you for what we're given, Aloy. Hopefully we'll see him again soon. Speaking of making do with what we're given, uh, how... What can you channel that, 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 that God stuff of yours in, into or through? What? <laughs> As in... And I'm going to pull out the little container with the bullet. If you could, say, put enough God stuff through this to purify this, maybe you could purify other things, too. She's talking about this. Oh, Lord almighty, Here. Aloy. Here. Is that what you've been thinking of this whole time? <laughs> I'm thinking of what else could you on Spork, could you maybe if we found something in there outputting that into the entire area, What's what would happen if there, you put your stuff through it? I'm would going be to certainly be put, better than bad juju. I'm going to be putting a bullet through whatever manner of demon is in there. That's the cause of all of this. And if it's not a demon? And if it's a generator? Then you'll figure out a way to shut it down, I'm sure. But that's part of why then, I'm asking this now. And for Reba, it's like generators are also uh, usually uh, not immune to bullets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're muted again. Is also aware of the I have yet to see a piece of machinery that's immune to <laughs> bullets. No, do not, do not let. Uh, Realize that! Because she wants to study. You're wise, you're wise, you're both wise enough, and you know Alloy well enough to know that if you, she wants it whole, it's because she wants to poke at it. Alloy, you need to focus on what's right in front of us, here and now. We don't know what manner of danger is inside that is. place. It's probably more than just a generator. It's going to be something that will shoot back, or claw back, or worse. So don't go getting distracted. Whatever the- whatever is going on- I would rather turn it off without having to get shot at? And <laughs> understanding it prevents us getting shot at! We- you can't understand what it is until we find what it is. Ah, uh, never mind. Never mind. What just- the, just lead the, on. Lead on. Alan? I'll just take notes. What does Alloy think? I'm sorry, I have to ask this. What does Alloy think? If there's something that will get in the way of any generator, how will understanding the generator help something keep her from well, shutting basic it? She's basically thinking if instead of, you know, just smashing, she could find the off switch wherever in this ridiculous building it might be. And then somebody could turn it back on. Once the off switch is pulled, she'd have time to, you know, 
dismantle it without accidentally blowing stuff up or getting hurt in the process or Jillian ending yeah. up even more up to her eyeballs in insanity. Yeah, except again, they're making the point of what if there is a being between her and the generator preventing her from finding yeah. the off switch. Yeah, I get the point. She's still like... She's smart enough to see that as a possibility. She might not be wise enough to to care or think about it herself, but when they bring it up, it's like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. right. I keep forgetting, because... You know, she... That is why she said, just lead on, lead on. I'll just take notes. Yeah, that's... I guess like, that... I get it. Yeah, like, that, get that's, it now. that's the keep... that's the bit that wasn't coming across, the I get it now. That was petulant yeah, but... child. <laughs> She's got better charisma than that. Mm -hmm. Reva, how high do you reckon that fence was? It was the height of the building, as far as you yeah. could see. So uh, it was at least a t at least as tall as the building, and that's and eight, that's not counting the barbed wire. Yeah, eight ten feet maybe. Yeah, mm -hmm. with, uh, extra with the barbed wire. <clears throat> which is reckon? not fun to try to climb over, let me tell you. You could take some of her blankets, put that over the top. <laughs> yeah, if you want to shred the blankets. You don't... You want to climb that high up and then potentially risk more damage? We'd Whatever be, way we go, it's going to be a risk. We'd be better off... Do we have any way to cut through that chain link? Totally. Cut through the fence. Um. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm gonna do something here. Um. Blink. Yeah. Um. Muffin, who's apparently been listening to this, <laughs> backs up. And given that roll, glum 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 glum, wee, and clears a good ten feet. Problem solved! For you! What? You think I won't send him back to get the rest of you? <laughs> <laughs> boop, boop. He's actually doing the happy dance. Boop, 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 boop. Are you sure Muffin can jump that high with someone on its back? Consistently? Consistently, yes! And then actually does, does box in front of Alloy. I say again, we could just cut the fence. I'm getting on Muffin. Okay, I'm gonna roll this time. Yeah, yet again. Whee! Actually, to be fair, that sets the precedent. You, you can you can do the jump. Really, it's just gets a running jump. Whee! It's cow jump over the moon time. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Behold! Actually, to, I be, don't... to be fair. Uh, make me a strength save? For staying on? Yes. Strength save. Yeah, it would be the same as athletic. It would be roughly the same as athletics, not as acrobatics, but that doesn't qualify here. Yeah, no, unfortunately. 17. Yeah, you, you're used to this by now. You've probably done it a couple of times, so... Probably for fun. <laughs> Behold! I don't build things half-assedly! <laughs> Alright then. Boop. Giant waves muffin. Clunk, 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 clunk. Boop, 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 Reba's, boop. And Reba's wise enough not to, not to say what your immediate thought was, which was, <laughs> no, you use your whole ass. <laughs> Jillian... Awkwardly climbs it is a, up. It is a smart ass, but it is not a very wise ass. <laughs> <laughs> you are the wise ass. <laughs> She's yeah. the smart ass. And uh, to be fair, you are not there yet. It's a bit of a ride before you actually get to the fence. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're yeah, still I'll way, wait. way back by the. Yeah, basic, basically, you guys are making a plan of entrance. Although, of course, okay. the fact is is that you're still going to have to get into the building. And Reba might remember that there were those rocks she didn't like the look of. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah, those were mentioned in the running commentary. So yeah, but it, sometimes <clears throat> they need to be flagged up again because right, it's us. I wasn't going to say it, so thank you. You're welcome. I know it's us. So all right, we jump over the fence. We're not going straight for the building first. I we need to check out that garden. There's something there. I never got a good enough look at the rocks in that garden, but I want to check those out first. What are the chances that's a security system? What? <laughs> she did, there, Re, Reba, she, she makes a point. If they're a hmm. ritual circle. Jillian, uh, Jillian's fine for what? But while, while Reba would be first... Reba's like, eh, and then, well, okay. Yeah, if it's a ritual, if it's a ritual circle of a sort, okay. Well, I mean, I won't know until I get eyes on it. So, at the very least, I can get close enough to see if it is or not. Yeah. The thing, thing is, given where it was, Muffin's gonna have to be careful about where he jumps over that fence, or he's going to land right in the middle of it. Hmm. And we'll have to be careful where we go over the fence so we don't land on it. All right. So long as we have a chance to aim, we should be fine. No panic jumping. Any other planning you guys want to do before you're actually on the grounds? How do we actually, do we have any inkling as to how we're going to get into the building? Because we can't, well, we could, I mean, the win what windows I did, what windows there were had bars. There weren't a whole lot of windows to begin with. And there's really only that front door. Uh, to be fair, if there's a garden, there has and it's walled off everywhere, and you didn't see a a, a gate. There's got to be a door from to the garden. Yeah. Oh, okay. Into the building. Uh, right. Okay. I in my head, I thought that there was a way from the front around to the garden. But... Well, no. Basically, what you have is um, I'm not showing it yet because I've got fog of war. But basically, you've got a a, a square with a smaller rectangle at the front walled off on two sides by chain link fence and the other two sides from the inside by a corner of the building. Gotcha. Yeah, so okay. Now okay. Now I see it. So uh there might be a there's probably a door off the garden, so we may have to go through or along the garden anyway. But if you want to avoid the front door. Yeah, if we don't want to just go through the front. And I'm going to pull out the these tools, spread the various lockpicks. And then she yeah, nods we over know. to Aloy. Once we're inside the grounds, we can take a look at the less obvious doors with Aloy. Yeah, because basically the only you only saw one door, which was the front door. And you can assume the existence of a second door, which is the door from the garden to the inside of the building. Um, trying to get through those bars would probably require more violence than you really want to use at this stage. Yep. So those are your options. Go through the front doors first. Which, okay, this is more an alloy thing. Yeah, going through the garden is one thing, but... You probably need to go through the front anyway, because you've seen, I mean, hospitals more than sanitariums, but same basic principle applies. You might find things in the front of the building that would be helpful. Uh, documents, a map of the grounds, maybe, patient notes, keys... I've started, I've opened the book again, flipped to a blank page, uh, oh. drawn up a sketch of what Reba described layout-wise, marked where the front and marked where the back is, then sketched out a comparative, on uh, a hospital I'd, recall be, I'd recalled being in, marked the front, the, and drew in what was in the front. Yeah. So all the like little places where they'd keep like yeah. document room, pharmacy, 
uh, director's office, main reception. I'm thinking these might be more equivalent than not. So we might actually have to go through the front anyway. Okay. If that's going case, into the back is just into wherever it comes off the garden, which could be a random hallway. Then we'd be missing well, the yeah. potential for keys, any kinds of miscellaneous chemicals they keep on hand in the front, mm. patient files. More to the point, you know, because you could obviously walk around the building. Getting to those areas first means there's more likely of you getting more before something's aware you're there. Hmm. Well, that's we again. That's for alloy door. because mm. it, that's that's more of an intelligence thing. Mm. So you Plus go through me. the front door, Aloy. We're going to be going through whoever they ha surely have watching the front door. There's, well, I mean, there's somebody in there. Yeah, but we also mm. we don't know we we don't know how many somebodies. I mean, and, yeah, but the front is never we don't, really. Well, and if we don't bother knocking and just walk right in? Uh, to be fair, uh, the Reverend did try to look, or at least give you a look into the windows. There didn't seem to be anyone moving out there. And you guys know from previous experience that there's ways of getting things from point A to point B. Without. Not to mention they might be, you know, they, they might be busy with the supplies, um doing other bits and pieces, because you did not see anything moving in there. Mostly you yeah. saw an awful lot of neglect. And some I very saw... depressingly colored walls. <laughs> I didn't know depression had a color until then. Uh, uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, when the Reverend was, was, was doing his walk around, I saw nothing moving. I saw nothing but neglect and depressing colors on the walls. Uh, but, and I think we're all aware by now you can move things without moving things. Uh, so if we got to go through the front door, okay, Aloy, that's sound. Secure, that's, that means no, if there's no, security... So if that means if their security is at all there, that means it's all internal and possibly completely distracted by whatever they got just brought in. Mm -hmm. Well, not only that, but I haven't been in that many hospitals, but if I remember correctly, the first entrance, main entrance, is meant to allow for people that aren't actually patients to enter. So and whereas, once again, whereas the garden the door would probably have a stronger lock. Exactly. So chances are, you know, there's going to be some security, but we'll have some room first, if nothing else. Mm -hmm. And I'm right. to, and I just still like, see if these are at all as equivalent as I was guessing, there'd be a reception right there. But this whole space in the front with reception and the files in reception it usually is there, free usually, to wander in lobby. Yeah, usually there's a separate document room mm -hmm. because depending on how many patients they've had, but there's usually yeah. some immediate patient files in reception. Obviously, all of this depends on how much they're still using it like a sanitarium. Yeah, I, I mean, the place is supposed to have been closed down, but, you know, depending on how much they actually closed down and how much they just closed down, uh, <laughs> there may or may not be things uh, still set up. Well, point being, going through the front, I'll agree, better choice. All right, then. And we're going to have to make more decisions once we actually get in, so let's get this show well, on the road. And if we're just going into the front, do we even need to hop the fence? Because no. the Reverend didn't have to. No, you would not need to hop the fence because the doors are right there. You actually saw him set them down next to the doors. But it was... I'm so, I'm, that was in character for everybody else. <laughs> yeah, and then you just got Muffin sort of head retracting in kind of like a slope. 
Sorry, Muffin. I'm sure he will. I'm sure you'll need to jump me somewhere. Wow, bunch of words at some point. <laughs> uh, other thing that uh, Reba will note is that the garden, the door into the sanitarium from the garden might not be big enough for Muffin, whereas the front doors, you know, are. Oh, because of the big, right? Double, double doors. Yeah, the big double doors. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aloy, something else, too, uh, now that it occurs to me, a side door, well, is going to be just that, a single door, but those front doors are, they're, they're meant to be able to, like, wheel things in or people in. Uh, so they're the big double door, so Muffin can fit. Even more reason to go in the front. Boop, boop. Yeah, so we can Happy bring dance. Muffin. Chunk, 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 chunk. Catch means... Catches the look. Boop. Don't know what we should do about the horses. Do we want to bring them? Jillian, that's on you, Jillian. Do we want to bring them closer? If to the you building? do, and somebody. This this one's for Jillian. If you do and something happens to them, you've only got Muffin to get you back. This well, little cover is here, and the dust storm the way it is. It's not like anyone from the sanitarium can see them from there. Mm -hmm. This is probably the safest they'll be. True. Yeah, I just can, worry about. You can handle hobbling them. Um, which is a temporary thing that you can do with horses just to keep them from wandering too far. Uh, there's oh. not a whole lot growing, but you can probably, given some of the shit that Alloy carries around, you can probably uh, improv something for food and water for them just in case. And if things get really bad and you're away for a really long time, they'll be able to make their way to someplace else because the, the tethering them, you wouldn't be tethering them particularly permanently, but they're relatively well-trained horses. So unless they were well, literally starving to death. And Reva can, Reva would go to hers and basically tell him the situation <laughs> and basically, you know, literally tell him if we're gone for, you know, a long period and it's not safe, Go back to town how, and how go many, to the church. How many sons? Because they don't... They're, they're still animals. Yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, Jillian, how many days do you think... Morning? Like, if we... How long do you think this might take? Like, how long do you think... How many sons? How long until we tell... Basically... If we tell the horse to go back, how long do they want? How long do you want to wait? <sighs> like, mm -hmm. how long do we want to spend in there before we decide we'll come back? <laughs> I'd, like, I'd we, say, given you started in the morning, tomorrow's if if you're not out by tomorrow sun up, something horrible has happened, and at the very least. The horses coming back would alert the reverend. Oh, I wouldn't want to stay the night there by any means, even if theoretically we could find a place to hunker down inside or even in the hills out here. Not okay, so thing, but morning. Yeah. Okay. Sun up tomorrow. So the next sun. Okay. So that one. Perfect. Yeah, you can. To, to be fair, given your your particular gifts, you can tell both horses. I would. I just went with. I went. Uh, I was speaking mostly to mine because we're familiar. <laughs> I'm familiar, and... but she. But your horse is not your familiar. Well, no, no, no. That no, would no. that would be Spot, who stayed behind. By the way. Yes, I left. I deliberately left Spot behind to keep an eye uh, on the on the church and have his have fun hunting. <laughs> The mice. The, 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 Not eating, but hunting. I said hunting, specifically. Yeah. You said it didn't taste good. No eating. <laughs> anyway, but all, you, you more or less have your plan. We're a little past break time. So when we come back, um, we'll have you infiltrating the uh, sanitarium. And we're back. We're heading into the asylum proper. It's a 
little bit of a trot a few minutes um, after you've hobbled the horses and made sure they've got enough to eat and drink for a little while anyway. You come to a set of double doors flanked on either side by barred windows. It's an it's a small building for what it's supposed to be. But, you know, I guess you kind of hope that there aren't that many in the way of people needing a sanitarium. All the same, the doors are heavy and kind of imposing looking. The bars on the windows are thick and having to try to cut through them would be a pain in the ass. So there you are, in front of this block of a building. Um, off to your right is the chain link fence with the barbed wire. But it's still hard to see more than a few feet in any one direction because of the dust. But there you are, you're at the doors. Yeah, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have been climbing over that. <coughs> boop, 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 boop. Jillian. Happy patting muffin. Happy producing Jillian tries laughter. to open the door. The door is locked. Jillian looks to Aloy. I've already got the lockpicks out. I was just sort of waiting for Jillian to do whatever he was doing. These stools? Yeah, th this is a tougher lock than you'd expected. Uh -huh. You haven't uh -huh. broken any picks, but you were expecting an easy lock. This is not an easy lock. This is a tricksy lock. You're gonna need to do a little better than that. This lock is made of stupid. Okay, let's 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 reset. Pull. Come on, back out. Careful, careful. Okay. Right. Square one. Should I try again? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, we wind up having to stop when you, you, you're getting frustrated now, and something nearly bends. <sighs> I... Don't say a word. I'm, no. If anyone says anything, I'm going to shoot it. And I'm going to carefully extract my stuff and ready for an, for one more attempt. Okay. Deep breath. Try again. <laughs> that freaking 20. Yeah. Uh, after, after the various mistakes, you figured out, A, where you went wrong, and it's like you can now just about... Sherlock can see the the what the tumblers must look like in there, and can then just do it with zero problem. And the door opens. It's kind of dim in there. There's not a whole lot of light coming in through the windows. Are you heading in? I'm just letting the door so sort of start swinging open and waiting for the other two. No, Jillian draws out. her gun. Yep. Okay. Goes inside. Well, where you come in is a uh, corridor. They, they. Basically, everything about this place is depressing. The tiles are grubby and a sort of a slightly rotted pea soup green. I think we're still on the previous map. Oh, sorry, my fault. My fault entirely. There we go. Point. And again, it's it's yeah. You you're probably gonna want to scroll out a little bit. Um, yeah, it's again. It's with with the with the doors open. There's a bit of there's a bit more light. But you're probably gonna have to shut them because the dust is blowing in, and you don't want more of that around than you have to. But it's fairly dim inside. It's probably going to be even more so deeper in. 
um, what you're seeing is a heavy glass fronted window there a heavy metal door there and corridors there and there Aside from the window outside, are we hearing any any sounds coming from the building itself? Perception check. Just about to percept. <laughs> Not twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Even for Reba, it's difficult to tell whether the noises are wind outside. She doesn't think there's any sound in there, but that doesn't necessarily mean there's not anything. Whatever, if there's anything in there, it would probably be smart enough to use the wind sounds to cover their tracks. Besides which, you'd probably have a lot... I mean, you know that even with the door shut, you probably wouldn't really be able to tell. But it'd probably be easier to tell if the doors were shut. Yeah, there's no, um, there's no way around it. We are going to have to close those doors. Interesting. I'm, I'm going not... to reach into my stuff, pull out the widget that, that, that I have for a wand of secrets. Okay. And trigger that. Uh, do you want me to pl uh, click it? I'm just looking at it. I'm just Googling. Yeah, okay. Um, no, that's that's fine. Um, as far as you can tell, within 30 feet, no secret doors and no traps. And no funny business in here. But I'd say first order of business would be to go through that and I'm pointing at the heavy glass window to get at whatever is reception. And it's a question of seeing if you can find a door because it's probably easier than breaking a glass window. Alright. Jillian starts heading that away. Okay. I'll let Jillian take the lead. That's about... I mean, when the door is shut, visibility is still pretty low. So what she's got when she moves a little further in that way is door there and door there. The door there reads uh, there's a little plaque that next you know, next to the door that reads reception. A uh, little plaque there reads pharmacy. Jillian goes to open the reception door. Locked. Ways to alloy. Goggles of night come down over my face because okay. I'm already not seeing that the visibility in here blows. Yep. And I'm going to break out the tools again. Thieves tools. 23. Yeah, even with that roll one of your more necessary tools for this kind of thing bends. You're going to need keys. Uh, I'm going to pull it out, pop the screwdriver and mending at it to make sure it's completely back 100%. Yeah, you'd have to straighten it out again to, to uh, unless you want it mended permanently in a bent position. Yeah, bas basically like I First, I'm rectifying it, and then to make sure there's no, like, structural weakness in the metal that'll snap it later. Yep. Giving it a once-over. Mm -hmm. So, you're gonna need to find keys. So, if the lockout front wasn't made of stupid already, these are worse. We so, need keys. Okay. Hmm. Jillian gestures for these two to wait as she goes back to the front to Look through okay. the window. What she's seeing is a desk, some shelves. Hang on, I think I can 
do a reveals area here, I think. Out there. Yeah, there's a, a desk, bookshelves, and a door here, which, uh, given... She's not stupid. Uh, if that's reception, that door probably leads to something like uh, patient files. Joke. I roll investigation to look for signs of recent life, like that prints would, in the dust. Yeah, that would actually be perception because uh, investigation is poking and you can't poke because yeah, there's glass in the way. That's a good point. <laughs> It's it's dim. It is really dim. Um, I mean, to be fair, I probably should have asked for a... I mean, it, there is some light in from the window, so you're okay there for the time being, but... The glass is a bit... time-weathered and a little tricky to see through. Um, not Maybe not as much as it should be, but... It's still difficult to see fine details through. It does look like there might be some things that were left on the desk that wouldn't have been if the place was sh shut down, but it depends on how fast they were evacuated. Okay. She goes back into the... Yep. Corridor. Talk to these guys, okay? Might have been someone there recently, but it's hard to see. Showing looks expectantly to Aloy. Give me a straight up intelligence check, Aloy. Nine. Uh, well, if you can't pick the locks, there's got to be some lock you can pick. There's got to be. You're just going to have to keep trying doors, and if there's any place that was going to have keys, it'd be like director's office or something. So, here's a thunk. We still need keys. But until we find those, the best bet I can come up with is, I'm going to keep trying doors, and we need to find a director's office or something suitably overly fancy that we can put a hole in. Well, hold on, because... Who needs ready access to every room in a place? Servants. I'm... Yeah, except... You haven't been to a place like this. You don't know where servants' bits might be. And the other person, she's right, who would need access to every room, particularly the room with documents, where, you know, servants might not. Because mm. servants in a place like this are nurses, um... I mean, cleaning staff wouldn't need access to patient files. You wouldn't give cleaning staff access to okay, patient files unless somebody was there. The person who would have all, all access pass to everything in that place would be the person directing it. And Here's she's been one. in more places remotely like this than you have. Hmm. Well, I was speaking just in general terms. Like, you know, you any place... Yeah, but she hasn't... She mostly... She's not that... Reba well, doesn't... Well, that's why I put it like I did. Yeah, but even then, right. you're, you're, okay. you were giving her a knowledge of... A deeper okay, part of civilization than Reba's got. Fair enough. So, while we're... Where do you reckon a director's office would be, Aloy? Still somewhere out at the oh. front. Might be that heavy door you passed by. Could be the big ass door over the one with the really heavy metal, but first things first, I'm gonna swivel around lockpicks out for the pharmacy door. 
these tools. Twenty. Yeah, no. Um, at that point, something does actually break. Yeah. It's, yep. We're not doing yours anymore. I'm going to do... You can, thankfully, because of the way it broke, fish out the missing bit and mend it. Yep, I'm going to make sure my kit doesn't completely self-destruct. Or you... Yeah, Aloy, let's not do that. Let's find the director's office. If they've got labels, we'll find it. It's got to be one of these. You said there was a... Ah. Let's, we can go back Giant and check. heavy door, so yeah, we can go check that. But I'm just going to point out, not saying that that's going to be my first resort or anything, that if all of this fails, we're just going to have to start shooting locks off of things. Let's try to avoid making that kind of noise until we absolutely need to. Yep, see? That's what I mean. I didn't say first resort. I said if all else fails. Mm -hmm. and, of course, and, none of and that's why she keeps trying with the tools. Yeah. And of course none of these are... All right. Reaver's just looking at the door frame. Just like, ah, damn it. <laughs> Let's find that office. Metal. And... Yeah. Ah. Head around towards that big door. Yeah, and, and that particular door just says lounge. But if mm. you're standing at that corner there, you get to see a little further down the corridor. You see another similar door, and the plaque on that one does say director. Mm. So, here. Hmm. Yeah. Good eye, good eye, Aloy. <sighs> Heavier door, bigger, better security. Although surprisingly for Reba, that one doesn't have windows. Remembering. Hang on, where did that? What? That's odd. There's no windows on the director's office. Not from the. No. No, orienting this with, with the walk around that the Reverend did. I don't think there's any of the win which would make sense because they were, I mean, there were bars anyway, but. But even there, there wasn't even a barred window on. Yeah, there wasn't. There was this, there's no windows on this wall at all. That's strange. Yep. Which says to me, possible trap. It's definitely odd, at the very least. Hang on. Uh, yeah, five, ten, five, nah, no, it wouldn't have been in your want of secrets uh, bit. I'm gonna walk over to. I'm gonna walk over to the wall near the door, like just shy of it. Produce the wall. Uh, produce the wand widget and click. No, no trap, no secret door. I want to try the luck picks again, but at the same time, I kind of want to just shoot it. I'd... Try it at least once. Oh, yeah, way. we'll try the try the picks first, uh, and then we'll go from there. Um, putting away the wand, trying the stuff. Roll. Um, mm -mm, never mind. Twenty-three. This one is, in fact, a slightly easier lock. I mean, it's it's still very, very fiddly, more so than the outside door, but not as fiddly as the one that was leading to patient records and chemicals. Those ones, things like that, things to do with patients, etc., are not going to be anything you can pick. This one, it takes you a while. You will not let it beat you. And while eventually... Aloy... Can... Okay, sorry, go ahead. While Aloy's doing that, Jillian takes out her 
still opens it up to load two silver bullets alternating between the lead. Okay. But, well, it, it takes until Jillian has completed her reload. What's going to be in the chamber first, silver or not? Silver. Okay. And once she's checked that, thought about it, yeah, silver first. Silver for monsters. <laughs> 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 and after she's does does Reba want to make any prep uh, I don't think I need to prep prep anything specific I will uh, I will have my uh, my tomahawk out but um I will have uh, like be in the mind to I'll do a thing if I have to as far as the magic goes, but there's nothing I necessarily have to prep right off. Okay, it's okay. I was just asking. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't think I. I don't. I won't need to cast anything just yet. Oh, actually, now that you mention it. Uh, No, I'm going to hold off. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. What were you going to do? I was giving serious thought to doing Detect Magic. since, But I know that Aloy already checked for, for traps and such, or at least I'm assuming that's what that widget was. Yeah, she knows that widget. She's seen the okay. widget used. Okay. I wasn't sure if she had or not. I couldn't quite recall. Um, but I... Make up your mind! Aloy, you did you yeah. got it? it? It when she's asked that click. <sighs> okay. Yep. Before we before we go in, before we go barging in, and she'll hold her hand out and do uh, detect magic, centered, directed toward the room. Okay. Um, it's more residual than anything else. Magic has been cast in that room, and it's the kind of thing she occasionally gets from Alloy's magical items, but fainter. Like, they've been left there to burn out. Hmm. But there's nothing actively working magic in that room. Okay. There's nothing actively magical in that room. Uh, there's residual... Uh, if there was something in there, it's burned out or let burned out. So, I think we're as we're as safe as we're going to be at this point. Huzzah! I'm going to go in and just start looking for keys. Yeah, well, uh... <laughs> turn this place inside out. If I have to. <laughs> right in, no, no caution at all. Okay. Well, she doesn't do caution. Point. It's dark in there because, again, no windows, and it's not like anybody's left a light burning. Alloy is the only one who can see shit. Yeah, thank you, Boggles. And what she sees is a very cluttered desk, a couple of weird-looking, for her, rocks and twigs, um, a cup of coffee that seems to be growing its own biosphere, half cup of coffee that appears to be growing its own biosphere. And on a corner of the desk, a fairly heavy ring of keys. I'm going to do three things. One, uh, uh, pull out anything that I have on hand that may resemble a cover, even if I have to go reaching back out to Muffin to pull it from wherever, put uh, that over the biosphere. <laughs> I mean, what... Just... Uh, okay, so you... I'm sure you've got, like, a cup of some description, sort of bowlish kind of thing. So you see her, because she'll have to go out, rummage through Muffin. Avoid, do you have a lantern in Muffin's compartment? Uh, I'll bring everything out, just give me a second. And yeah, it comes because it comes out with a bowl, a little bowl. Goes back in, and you hear clunk. And probably also you. Know. Okay. Number one. 
men, too. I'm gonna pick up the keys. Did you hear a squish? <laughs> no, because it was over the over the mug. We clunk and just... Okay, and you've got... Encapsulating. Got... Yes, and okay, you, you guys hear a jingle of keys. I mean, to be fair, you guys probably did smell something. And then smell was kind of cut off by clunk. It's like, ooh, that's a... And I'm going to collect the errant plant things. Ah, uh, yes, throw the rocks and twigs. Well, sticks, really. Yep. Um, one of I... them... One of them... Goes... Squish... When you... Touch it. And when, oh, you, open your, when, you, when you open your hand again... You're not seeing color through those goggles, but you know the look of blood through those lenses. The, 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 the stick you just picked up is covered in it. And now it's all over your hand. Oh, that's grody. Jillian takes a match to, from her pocket to light up so she can stick her head inside. Hey, you, you, you've got it. And unfortunately, because you've, you've got your, your night vision on, you oh, can't no. a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Can you put that out right now? <sighs> I am not joking. What? She shakes it out. What on earth are you doing, jo oh boy? Doing my job, and you I did, bring the sticks out. Yeah, you did actually. You did actually see in that brief moment that her hand, her palm, was blood. Oh boy, what did you do? And Not she kept... what I did, you absolute ridiculous yeah, and she, person. She comes out with a couple of stones with bits carved in them. Um, some sticks that are actually more like wands, as Reba knows. The, the, the kind of thing you use in anathemy. And one of them, which she picked up at what would be the blade end in something more carved, fresh blood. Reba? This is on you. But then again, she's already sensed, she's already detected magic, and... If there's... If there was magic in, in, in with any of this, it's no longer there. Does any of this make any, any sense? And I'm gonna separate out a rock and hold it up. It's oh. it's got some. I mean, it's it, the the runes on the stones, the the, the wand athame kinds of bits and pieces. Somebody was doing ritual shit with that stuff, and they were doing it recently. If there were notes in there, there might be more. But you could do anything with this kind of thing. Although, if it required that amount of blood, because that thing was covered from blade tip to mm -hmm. hilt. Um, that it probably wasn't pleasant. There's any number of things that they could have been doing. They were obviously doing something ritual-based in there. That amount of blood, it probably or wasn't not nice. Ne not necessarily in there, it's just that's where everything was taken. Uh, that's where it was put, yeah. Uh, right, they, uh, they were doing ritual stuff with these things. What it was... Where, did you see any notes? Was there anything? I, 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 this, this tells me nothing. There were some bits oh, of good. paper. Check good real quick I'll get for those papers. In a, I'll get those in a second. I have to at least put this away. I can't just. You want me to just drop it here in front of us all? You could put it back in the room. But she I'm going to study to... it. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm just going per perception to check from game. from. Uh, to be fair, at this point, it's Jillian. Jillian's the only one paying oh. attention because Reba and. Oh my God! No, and, clearly not. You know, the, 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 <laughs> there, there's a certain amount of. The, the wind seems to be picking up a bit. That, that's about what you've got. Pull another box out of another storage bin out of muffin. In go the things. Yep. Boop, boop. No, boop. no, not not one of the inbuilt ones. I'm pulling yeah. one out. And... Yeah, but 
that Muffin is still looking at these things that are going to be stored back in Muffin eventually and just... Oop. I have to put them somewhere so I'm not just scattering them everywhere. I'm going to try and clean off my hands, go back in there, look for notes. Cleaning off your hands is easy. There's some bits of paper on, on that desk. Most of them are not written in a language that you are aware of or understand particularly well. It's very similar to some of the shit that was being written in that kid's diary and, and on that bullet, but again, it's not an alphabet you know. Oh, what I would give for the ability to translate anything. And I'm going to scoop all that up, come back out, hand Jillian the keys. Thank you. Now let's get going. To where? Back, uh, that away towards the reception door. Okay, well, um, now we roll the hand of fate. It takes you a while to find the right key. There are a lot of keys on that. There's, let's see, um, There are 16 keys on that ring. And she has to go through about five of them before she gets the right one. Shit. You know how it is when you have too many keys and you don't know which is <laughs> supposed to go in the right door and they all look the same. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Because of, yeah, of course, they all, most of the locks got put in here at the same time when the place was built. So yeah, they're all going to have very similar looks. Great. Uh, well, uh, make me, given some of your roles, I hate to ask this, but make me a perception check. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't tell the difference between any of these keys. Alloy, horribly, Alloy might be better off, because she might be able to, like, because when she pokes things, she tends to feel the little niggly details. Jillian fumbles and rattles and kisses. Yeah, but she, I mean, she gets the door open eventually, but it's like, there's going to be more of this. She pockets them herself for now. Okay. Then so, so, yeah, you... you carefully come. opens the door. Yeah. Right. Come in, and you know, as you can see, there's a door there. Uh, some shelves with files and bits on them there. A lot of them are weather-beaten and chewed by things. Rats. Other things. Um, there is another half-finished biosphere on the desk. And there's that smell again. Along with uh, what appears to be a, a We call them diaries, but day planner kind of thing. Um, yeah, they're the kind of diary that's more calendar than... Jillian, I'm gonna go scoop. Jillian gonna surveys and picks up one of the diaries. Well, a diary. It's a diary for uh, about three years ago. She kind of looks over the the assortment of them picks up whichever one is the most recent. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. There is only the... You're muted, and that's just as well. There's only the one on the desk. Okay. And that one is from three years ago. She opens it and looks for the last entry. Um, it mostly it just seems to be... Uh, and it seems to be filled out for the year. Um... But most of the later bits and pieces don't have names exactly on the days where something was going on. There's either X's in a 
you suspect it's not ink. It's a weird shade of rusty off red brown. Some of them have more of those runes in that same ink shade. And you don't really know what they're supposed to mean. But they were clearly important enough to be written in what you suspect is blood, so... <laughs> Jillian, Do the... Sorry, before before you start asking that question, Jillian, make me a wisdom save. <sighs> Twenty-one. <laughs> yeah, there there is. It's like the dimness of the room tries to close in on you, and you guys see a a faint glow come off her very briefly and that beats that darkness back but whatever it was it was it was coming for you Jeez. tenses of the you deep don't know why in. you, you it, it, this is just for her it's like tunnel vision when you're about to black out but it wasn't physical so yeah you see Jillian briefly, faintly glow and tense up. And then both, well, the the light at least subsides. Her tension probably not so much. Uh, She's still tense, I'm... but a different kind of tense. Jillian, I'm gonna want to have a look at that. Jillian passes that to Alloy <laughs> and then... Wisdom Make... save not... from Alloy. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. <laughs> on, on contact. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, this is going to uh, be fun. Eleven. Alloy touches it and blacks out. <laughs> Alloy. The goggles do nothing. <laughs> uh, for a moment. As the dark in the room close... Can you please mute yourself if you're going to giggle like that for fun? sake. I'm trying to have a moment here. Um, the darkness in the room closes in on Alloy and when it fades, she doesn't seem to be wearing the goggles anymore. The room she is in is lit with a single candle. She is strapped down to a rather uncomfortable bed, which, from what little she can see, bears some rather distressing, bloodish looking stains from the previous occupant, and some fresher ones that are probably hers, to judge by the owl that she is in. Her fiance, who looks about as gored and burned and wrecked as he did when she last saw him is standing over her in equally burned shredded and oozed lab coat how are you feeling? You were in significant pain, by the way. So, okay. Uh, ever question aside, am I physically like? Do the others see me as physically still there? Yeah. Not that you know that. I. Yeah, I'm not aware. So I. So I haven't actually physically moved. I'm just trying to make sure I'm oriented mentally. Yeah, but uh, you don't... That's the thing. The reason I'm not telling you this and you're going to stop asking is because you don't know. Yeah, Al I, yeah, yeah, you don't need to know what Alloy doesn't know at this point. Loads of... So, immediate swearing, lots of screaming. Just... Reaches, reaches into lab coat pocket, pulls out 
One of the syringes they had at the time, they were large. They weren't particularly pleasant. And Aloy, because she can't actually move anywhere, does get injected. And eventually she's not really able to scream all that much anymore. It still hurts, but... It's having a hard time finding the right swear words, or in fact the right volume. Are you ready to answer my question properly now, darling? Screw off! <laughs> uh, well, unfortunately we can't deal with that kind of language with simple drugs. So we're going to have to try something else. Don't worry. It'll only hurt for a moment. Turns to a uh, tray a little bit behind him where you can't quite see. And produces a bone saw. Oh, I see where this is going. Okay, uh, Jillian, Reba, what are you doing? Jillian kicks the book aside. Yeah, and she's not touching it anymore, but... Kind of kneels down, gives the lawyer a good shake. Okay. Wisdom save from Alloy. Thirteen! Somewhere in the middle of that, there's... I mean, she is, she's able to squ either she's able to squirm a bit more, which no, or something is happening from the outside. Maybe this isn't quite real after all, but it's kind of hard to consider at this point. You, s uh. you guys see her eyelids flutter a little, but... Jillian looks very hopelessly expectantly to Reba. Uh, I'm trying to figure out whether it's which. I'm looking at either remove curse or greater restoration. I'm not sure which one might do this do a thing. Barring that, <sighs> well, I mean, Jillian's got remove curse as well. <sighs> well, what I need to do. Well, okay, obviously, Make she could, up your, your mind. Sorry. mind. Jillian, she touched. She touched that. It did a thing. Uh, the only night curse of some sort. Something pulled her. Did something. Should we try to remove it? Um, yes. I all right. So Alloy I'll do it. I'll try first. Take seven points of psychic damage. So I will do. Uh, I'll cast Remove Curse. Uh, okay. Uh, wisdom save with advantage, because she still needs to wake up. Twelve. Welcome How to a minus one modifier. However, th th you feel the bone saw start cutting into and then it's just black. You're basically unconscious at this point. So it'll take a minute pretty much literally for her to wake up, but given that Reba does what she does, she knows that yeah, this this is just going to be some recovery time because I don't know what the hell that was, but it was atrocious. Like uh, there's the, apparently the this doesn't quite count as a trap. Ah, <laughs> well, like well, you know, <laughs> it's semantics. Like, Magic the, is built uh, on semantics. The uh, like like Reba probably felt like 
what whatever connection there was between still between the book and her probably at least thinned enough. No, so it, it she she felt it snap, but okay. Whatever was going on in there is probably the damage was still done. Yeah. So, so okay. liter- literally a minute later, uh, ow, for alloy, ow, ow, and there's still that feeling. It's fading quicker than it should, but as you wake up, the, there's still the feeling of drugged. The goggles go up off my. Yeah, er, well, the goggles go properly up off my face. Oh, thank God. Really? <laughs> she didn't say which one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know which one she meant, but I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, anyway. Are we just good? Really? <laughs> <sighs> and it's back to examining uh, uh, Alloy to make sure she's all right. Would that be, uh, well, I don't know if that would warrant a medicine check or anything like that. She's just really just making sure that Alloy's at like, this you point know, she's, aware. At this point, <laughs> she's shook, groggy, and getting with it, but she's going to need a minute. Want to make sure she's back, back. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. Just give her a minute. Rebo will lean back and give her some air. You can, as, as you're rubbing there, you can almost feel where the bone saw went in. Except then you realize, no, no, it's it's okay. So, but you can't quite stop for a second or two, patting there, just going. Uh, uh. <laughs> no blood, thankfully. I'm not sure I should ask what you saw or whatever it was that thing was doing but yeah let's be careful what we touch from here on out there's just I've gone from from a exhausted expression to just rage (laughs) (laughs) Alloy, 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 breathe. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, usually when that expression happens, there's a lot more words. <laughs> and the muffin is sort of, because Count quite fit through the door, but he's extended his neck enough to just sort of lean up to Jillian. Boop, boop. Well, Alloy, sorry. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Alloy, Muffin. Boop, boop. Just pat, pat, and scratching. Boop. Jillian goes to the book and lights another match. <laughs> Anybody gonna stop her? After seeing what it did to Aloy and nearly did to Jillian? Nope. <laughs> uh, which point yeah, it, it it ignites surprisingly well. The smell that comes off it when it burns is I mean it's old paper herbs that Reba has been taught never to touch. It's oily and weirdly musky and it's the smell of burning wrong. I immediately flash back to the book that we found in the shed. The flames die, leaving naught but ash. The smell lingers. I need so much dynamite. Uh-uh. Not yet. Not yet. We might blow up the building. We might not wind up blowing up whatever's causing everything that's going on. Jillian takes the keys and goes to the uh, down at the file room door. Okay. Um, and now we roll the hand of fate. <laughs> Takes you even longer to find the right key this time. You're a bit shook. But eventually, you come across. It's a librarian's nightmare in there! 
files every place. Disordered on the shelves, sprawled across the floor. Jillian looks for whichever one has the least amount of dust. They all have more or less the exact same amount of dust, for some reason. But, perception check. I hate to ask you for this, but sometimes you do okay! Yay. There you go! <laughs> There's one section that you find that, while well, it's probably poorly filed at this stage, um, does seem to be a... Uh, potential incoming patients. Remind me again, Spiegel, what was the name I gave to, uh, I gave to Alloy? Anna Marie Pyle. P-Y-L-E. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, you're looking through these and kind of opening them up and you see, you see one for an Anna Marie Pyle and you haven't, you're, you're flipping through it like you did the others, but there are pictures for some of them, and apart from the hair color and the way she's wearing it now, given that perception check, yeah, that's Alloy. Julian pauses, kind of reads down until I try to get to the end of the file or the most recent history. Uh, basically, they, there's, there's all... She's not very book-learned, is Jillian, but she can get enough to get that they didn't like her behavior they treated it as a disorder and there were various treatments that they were talking about uh, uh, trying on her um, a whole new shiny kind of system that seemed to involve electricity um, a few other bits and pieces that I will not make mention of but are kind of cornerstones of old time uh, mental health for women. I will not go into that. You can Google if you want. And I am far too well aware of those. And another relatively new uh, potential treatment that's having some success with living patients. Lobotomy. Note at the end stating that she was withdrawn as a potential patient. Seems to have recovered on her own. Uh, that was maybe eight, ten months before you met her, Jillian. Which, given some of the timeline, yeah, she'd been on her own for a little while, so that was probably around when she promised to marry the dude. And then a couple of months after that, the boom happened. And then she was on her own for a while, and then you met her. Her and her boot black dyed hair. <laughs> and her really bad southern accent. <laughs> Jillian sets that somewhere within easy reach. And then keeps nosing about. Yeah, there's. There's a few in. That, that goes along similar lines. Um, Mrs. Norrington's file does come up. Um, that one... There's not a lot of information in that file. A lot of it is stuff that you actually have, but the stuff that you don't refers to um, specialized treatment. A uh, whole bunch of things that read less like drug names and more like herb names. Um, uh, uh, speaking therapy with, and that's. You can't even pronounce that name, it's not a human name. And notes about a discharge, you know, notes on a discharge summary after a few of those. Is the unpronounceable name the only name, like, the reporting doctor? Uh, no, the, the reporting doctor... Uh, I haven't actually come up with a name for the reporting 
doctor, but uh, there is one specific doctor whose name I will come up with eventually. Um, who's deals with the special cases wasn't in Alloy's file yet. They might have thought differently when they met her. There was a mention of him in the uh, valuation. Fuck it, Dr. Mountjoy. It's a good enough southern name, really. So, yeah. Um, he turns up in a lot of these special cases. And evaluation for a few of the uh, potential incoming patients who had a course of treatment recommended, but was open to more... They actually use the word arcane methods, but it's unclear as to whether they're using it figuratively or literally. But there's a few that have gone through that kind of thing. Um, unpronounceable name does seem to have been absent for a little while, and given given that perception roll, one of the reasons that they were was a trip, a, a outpatient visit to Jillian's hometown. Hmm. Jillian just. Pauses, crinkles the edges of the papers. Mm. You guys are watching Jillian pull an alloy. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually tricky because there's actually no windows in that place, so she's having to light match after match. She's running out of matches at this point. Um, Unless you have light, you can cast yes. it on something. After the first two matches, she... Bur th and they probably burn your fingertips a bit, because you, know, yeah. you, you get distracted by that. Ow! Light. <laughs> Ow! Yeah, what? Wait, that... what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she casts light on the uh, ceiling. And so you guys hear her go, let there be light, and lo, there was light. <laughs> Or, as my chemistry teacher used to say, he'd, he'd walk into the classroom, um, particularly in the wintertime when it was fairly dark during the days, and just be, Fiat Lux, click. Et Lux Erat. <laughs> <laughs> he was great. Yeah. He really was. I have so many stories about my chemistry teacher. I really do. He was wonderful. Anyway. So, yeah. And then, and then she's just there, reading through things. She sets one aside, reads through some more. The, the, the gears turn a bit, and then crinkle. <laughs> yep. Jillian? Knowing our luck, that's bad. <laughs> Can we try the pharmacy now? No, let's... I want to... No, not yet. What... You know I don't like prying, but given the circumstances, we kind of have to. What did you find? If it it, it, it's got to be personal if it made you react like that. And of course, We're there is the matter of the one she set aside. Just We're say. looking for a man by the name of Dr. Mountjoy. He summoned or invited or some manner of demon or other creature that's been speaking to the patients including Mrs. Norrington and the doctor went back to my home no the doctor didn't go back to your home the oh. unpronounceable name Sorry. went back to your home the record says the demon went to my home is there a date on that? Uh, would have been maybe a little I mean you can't say for sure because there's a lack of I mean there is a date but you can't say for sure how much it means because 
I don't really know how the calendar in Deadlands works. And there's a lot of comparative dates that you don't know. But from the looks of that date, doing a little bit of mental maths and figuring best or worst case scenario, it would have been probably very soon after that last letter he wrote to you. The one that reached you recently. So that meant he wrote it a good... Well, given giving the Norringtons... Well, no, because the, he was there for the entirety of the Norringtons. That one was a fairly recent one. That was a few months ago. The the dates all match up to... Uh, they, men they make mention of on leave. And it just happened to be that in one of the notes... The you know, patient asked where... Patient asked why treatment was not continuing. Explain that went to town on outpatient call slash furlough. So yeah, it from the looks of things, it does look like it was probably a few days after that letter. And it sounds like, intentionally or not, something or someone in your hometown called this thing. Probably unintentionally. How long ago did Isaac write the letter? You're thinking it was a few months, because it would have taken a while to get to you. Okay. But you're not really sure. The that's that's the that's the only given that you now have a date to go by and where you're talking about. It couldn't have been long after. So yeah, it looks like he wrote the letter a few months before you got it. Okay. And that thing arrived a few days to a week at most after he gave it to that writer. Okie doke. Jillian sets aside the file. So what... <clears throat> what's the, uh... What's the other one you found? What's the lawyer doing? Probably peering into the door, paying attention? wondering. I, combination of looking at the door and still sitting there with Muffin, sort of almost serv treating Muffin's extended self as a, uh, as a almost like a surface animal. While Aloy is seemingly distracted, Jillian steps up closer and lowers her voice. The files on Aloy's stay here. No, she never stayed. She was a uh, Perspective oh, okay. incoming patient. I thought that file was on Aloy. What they plan it was what they planned to do to her. It okay. was just her application her application was withdrawn. I mean, it's right there for Reba to read if she wants to. Mm. I don't know. Uh, is Aloy going to react to the there being a file on her right now? Well, you don't... I she can't. Do, I'm she distracted. Doesn't, she doesn't know. That's why Jillian moved closer. Oh, you were talking to me. I thought... Okay. Yeah, no. My bad. Oh, boy. Um, Given, obviously, shit happened, you might need... Reba, the wise, you might need mm -hmm. that information. Oh, God, this feels wrong, but I need. we need to know. And we're not in a position to be able to keep secrets from each other. So, yeah, let, let me see it. And, and I'll, I'll read through it and get the information you already... Yep. You already I didn't see traded. nothing of the demon's presence on that file. And they were more than willing to write some matter of things on the others. Yeah, uh, Reba does notice that somewhere in the end there was talk about there might be interest from that unpronounceable name, which actually makes your eyes fucking itch. Yeah, I was about to add. Uh, I, I, oh, okay. I, knew the, I knew the name was on Jillian's. I couldn't remember. No, Jillian doesn't have a file. Not Jillian. Jillian's home. Right. So the, he went to right. a location. Yeah, the and the only reason that turned up was because a patient asked very asked, specifically. Right. Yes. Sorry, brain fart. But yeah, I, I, I did highlight a little bit later on that there was a mention in there 
kind of nestled in between the various bits of the um, that there might be interest by. And the only right. reason Reba yeah. notices it more is because she does have the wire, higher wisdom modifier, and Jillian's a bit more protected from that eye itchy thing, whereas you mm-hmm. stalk the crossroads and... Gotta see what I'm looking at. Okay. Don't ever... Yeah, it's yeah, not know... It's not that bad. It's just itchy. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, I know you probably can't say that, but don't ever try. Just warning you now. But we know it, and that's important. So remember it. Don't say it. Yet. (laughs) All the more reason a boy probably doesn't need to see the details there. You're right. I mean... But you might need to ask her what she saw now that she's calming down a bit more. Just so you know what actually happened. From her reaction... I mean, they didn't get to do any of this, but it kind of makes me wonder if she saw some of this, maybe? It's more of an idle threat than I thought it was. Not necessarily an idle threat, but... I, yeah, I got Dangerously you. close. Yeah, let's... Uh, but yeah, let's go make sure Eloy's alright. Or... Ish. For a given value of alright. And so... <clears throat> And yes, uh, Alloy is still on the floor using the, the extended head of Muffin as a, a therapy dog. But she's feeling better that you you, you you don't need to keep checking all the time and the drugged feeling is passed and now it's just... Yeah. Ms. Reaver's going to lean down, going to gonna kneel down uh, to... Uh to get on the same level as Aloy. I hate to ask, but given the circumstances, we've got to share what happened. I saw my fiance. I was strapped to something. And they went for my head with a bone saw. Hmm. Ah. That's okay. <sighs> oh, come on. She's not even trying to hide that. There, Alloy, there's got to be a certain amount of what? <laughs> that, she's not even trying to hide that. I don't care. And yeah, I'm just, I'm, lo- I'm looking at them with an expression of with the with the with the what expression and it's it's the lack of of surprise also yeah. the the fact that you yeah, she that she she is and... intelligent and that wasn't a that wasn't an oh shit are you okay which would normally be Reba's that's Alloy knows the look it's a this confirms my theory look mm-hmm. so there's something whatever it is hand it over. Bearing in mind, they didn't, and I'll hold my hand out because I'm assuming Jillian's still. Well, no, they, they, you guys near were leaving the room. it on a shelf, but yeah. Yeah, so I'll motion to to Jillian. Can you hand it to me? Jillian hands it to her, yeah, and I'll pass it to Aloy. And yeah, you, know, you get to read the whole thing. Yeah. Bearing in mind, they didn't, but this is apparently what they were thinking. Would Reba have any uh, any notion as far as the dates and lining up? I don't remember. Uh, uh, they weren't de- uh, not. <laughs> Maybe ish. You don't really know. You were Probably more fo- you were more focused on on the what and the name. Yeah. Okay, never mind then. Uh, trying to recall, were my uh, with with given the boom, do I still remember where my parents would have been at this time? Or where uh, they might be. They were further north. You got sent south to be with your fiancé and eventually... But your parents live up north. They're they're Pennsylvania Yankees. So I would remember where. 
Yeah. And yes, your parents are down. As so there's still, so yeah, so there, so yeah, they're still all, so the fa- so I'm confirming that they're still as, alive. As far as you're aware, it's been probably about a year now. Probably a bit more, actually. There's, but they're still alive. I'm putting a bullet in each one of them. You did see that her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Pyle, signed off on that. And and then apparently didn't sign off on it when she did what they wanted. You know enough about her story to know that. Yeah. So at first it, Reba would have been like, like whoa, and then thought about it and like, oh, well, yeah, all right, that makes sense. They'll have some very lovely rose bushes. We need to keep moving. Uh, Perception check, all three of you. Thank you very much. Oh my god. (laughs) (laughs) And that one. From Jillian there. Wow, okay. 14. Wow. I mean, I'm probably too concerned with Ally right now. And Jillian is way too focused on that thing went to her hometown and she's pretty sure she's figuring out what happened there. Alloy hears this impossible noise from further down the corridor, kind of like as far as she can tell there-ish there's something. There's something Wait, alive. There, sorry, click, click, click again. Sorry, yeah, uh, about, right about there. Weapons out, everyone. Showing the weapons out and just looking about very rapidly. Down the hall. See. Uh, the doorway. There's more than one. Oh, that's so down where, the hall you, to the left. Okay, where are you guys heading? Because that, that's where she heard the sound. Okay, so... And you're still not getting, because all your light is back mm-hmm. in that room. So, but you can just about get the impression of something. And actually, given your... Yeah, no, there's, there's something moving in the shadows. There. Jillian points out her hand, summons light in her palm. Okay, and what you see it's sort of humanoid but hunched. Its face is two kind of slit eyes, but its mouth is you know those yip yip monsters from Sesame Street when they open their mouths all the way and it <laughs> 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 yeah. Oh yeah, the, the aliens, the 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 the, the things uh, with the face that was mostly mouth. Yeah, the, with the little beady, with the little the, the little yeah. eyes and the big mouth and the game. Yeah. radioactive trash bag looking fucker. Basically, yeah, what you're looking basically. at is that. Oh boy. Oh, dear God. (laughs) And given that Jillian is the one looking at it... Because that's not sunlight she's got. Not that you'd know about that. Make me a... Constitution saving throw, please. And let's say that failed by five or more. Jillian falls unconscious. This just let there be light. There was light. Thing looks at her thud. And light goes away. <laughs> and since we're at about that time, um, let me just give us a little bit of a setup for the because Jillian would be about there. And do the select move. Yeah, that'll about do, because you've still got some idea of where you are there. 
Um, Reba's probably a little bit further back. Uh, alloy, given alloy is. Because she let Muffin go a bit more ahead that way. Yeah, so, good. Okay. So, when we come back next week, we'll roll initiative, and I will actually get a tag for the Bodak, who is standing right about there. So, let me just draw a, a shape for the Bodak, just so that I know where to put him. I'll know it's where gonna, to put him. That picture's gonna bug me because it reminds me of something I can't place it. Something Beetlejuice, I think. I clicked on the older edition versions, and it looks like something from a 90s children's book on aliens. Yes! Okay. Yeah, it was gray. <laughs> yeah. Yes! Yeah. That's, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Noms. So, yeah, when we when we reconvene next week, we'll deal with this thing that just one-shotted Jillian. Look, you're the one who just went poom! Not by fault. <laughs> I will I will actually I will see you all tomorrow. So Yes. Yes. Later guys.